Hey, I'm your host, Dean Austin. D to the E, the A to the N. And my guest today is the Regional Development Manager of the ACHA, Adult Congenital Heart Association, Emily Earhart. Hi, Dean. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and be on your Emily, show. Emily, Emily, Emily Earhart is in the house. We're, we're in the house. <laughs> so happy to have you. Thank you for blessing the mic and the screen and coming to my podcast. And we're, and we're going to touch on some serious, a serious topic, but, but, but we're going to make it fun and have a great time talking about it because you are superwoman. Ah, you are superwoman. Emily, you are, you are the regional development manager of ACHA. Yes. Which is the uh, adult congenital heart association. Correct. And that is powerful because you sent me photos. We've, we've spoke, we met actually through Kathy Lewis, comedian, Kathy Lewis. Yeah. Who, who I've known for, wow, over 20 some years doing stand up, And she's been in the hospital millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions, and millions of times. Mm -hmm. And I know it, it always has to do with her heart. And that's how we met because it was for the walk in it's a walk in 100, one in 100. One in 100, yeah. Yeah, Kathy is a fellow superwoman. Uh, she's definitely one of my superheroes. Nice. Uh, and we, we we have a similar past, you know, as, as many uh, congenital heart patients do have. We share a similar heart journey. Right, and it's called, it, you sent me the photo. I want to share the photo because uh, it's, it's, it's important for people to see this. You can explain it a little bit better once I put the photo up here. It's, uh, let's see if I get it. There we go. Okay, so this is the photo you sent me. And this is this Shones? Shones, is that what it's called? Yeah, so this is what my heart defect is, uh, which is called Shones Complex. And it's uh, just a bunch of different left-sided heart problems. Um, yeah. And so congenital heart defects can span a whole range of uh, different types of heart defects. Uh, my particular one is one of the kind of more complicated ones, like, like Kathy. This isn't her exact one, but she has a complicated one too. Um, and what it's meant is that um, I had to have open heart surgery before I turned one years old to repair um, the the kind of kink in the garden hose at the top, <laughs> in, right, which right. is the aorta coming out at the top. Beautiful. Uh, the thing that looks like a turkey head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to look at it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they, they repaired that when I was a baby, which... Um, enabled me to like, you know, kind of live semi-normal. I had to live with a lot of limitations. I got breathless. I couldn't, you know, do PE and sat on the sidelines, lots of things, had lots of procedures as a kid um, to kind of wait until my heart got big enough for my next surgery, which happened when I was a teenager. And that's when they repaired um, the number two spot. I had a bicuspid aortic valve, which means my, the door only had two doors. It's supposed to be a three door valve and it only had two. Um, wow. And so they replaced that when I was a teenager. Um, and that that surgery gave me like a, a newfound quality of life I had never known before. I started doing all the things that everyone takes for granted, like excelling in school and mm. uh, going to my college of my dreams and studying abroad. And I, I climbed Machu Picchu and I, I went to culinary school and I opened my own restaurant. I was just living large, you know. Right. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> not taking a single day for granted, trying to make the most of everything. Um, but like like a lot of uh, congenital heart patients um, mm -hmm. and, and like Kathy as well, you know, right. we kind of live surgery to surgery. You know, we get we're like a car. We go in for a tune up and it'll last us for a while. But, um, you know, we need lifelong care is the is the main thing. We're never 100 percent fixed. And so uh, when I turned 30, I started going into heart failure again. And mm. I had to have two more open heart surgeries back to back. So I've had a total of four. Um, and I, I had that uh, pesky aortic valve replaced again, and as well as my parachute mitral valve, which is that, I, I can't see what number it is. I think it's number one is that the kind of funky little door on the right or on the left. It's the left of the heart, but right on the photo. So um, yeah, I got that fixed. And now I'm officially bionic. I've got two mechanical valves. Um, oh, look at you, Superwoman. Now, yeah, so I got two um, two clicks. It's a really cool party trick. You know, when the room gets quiet, I let my heart do the talking. <laughs> right. And everybody's like, what's that noise? I think somebody's breaking into my car. So that's <laughs> you. Uh, no one's 
no one's messing with your car. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my heart being a superhero. Yeah. Right. That is beautiful. You know, it's 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 amazing what our heart does. Everyone mm -hmm. says it's a pump. It's a it's a muscle. It's mm -hmm. it's all it it. it it makes the blood go where it's supposed to go throughout our body. And it's so important. And it's funny because you said you went to culinary school. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you take it to the next level because not only you, it, it, you, you work, you have the bionic heart, you went and had the surgery and now you're putting good stuff in your body through, through and teaching people through your culinary masterpieces that you put on the plate in front of yourself and other people. Do you bring people over and go, hey, guess what? I'm cooking you a nice meal and this is very healthy. Or do you just uh, let people have free fall when they come come by? Well, I do have to confess my specialty when I was in culinary school was pastries. So even okay. though I am a very healthy eater, I love desserts. Okay. And, you, you, um, have, you, you know, I, I, I live. Yeah, I live. But, you know, there's ways you can you can enjoy sweets and things in a healthy way as well. Um, I love making, you know, vegan pastries and, and things with lots of oats in them, which are heart healthy. And, um, so it's, and it's all about balance, right? I, I think that's the, the most important thing my heart, um, defect has taught me is that it's about living your life as long as you possibly can, but in, in a way that you are living large, like you said, um, in a healthy kind of a way. So it's about balance. Yeah, definitely about balance. And the, tell us a little more about the walk in one, one in 100, because I actually was able to go and participate on a rainy day with you and, and everyone, including Kathy and yeah. I met your husband and, and it was amazing. So can you explain a little bit more about it? And I must add, you can still donate. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Thank you I'm for throwing that. it out there, giving you a plug, Emily. You could donate. Yeah. You could put the money on it. You know. Well, I just want to say thank you and kudos to everyone who came out last weekend during a very rare, rainy SoCal weekend. You know, us, I'm a native Angelino myself, and a little bit of water, and we just won't go anywhere. We won't even right. leave our houses, right? So, right. but we, I was so impressed. We had about a hundred people show up in the rain, getting wet at Griffith Park uh, to come out and walk as a community for people born with heart problems and heart defects. And, and it was a beautiful thing to see. It was really a great, a great group of people. Um, we, we have 12 walks across the country. Uh, we're kind of near the end of our walk season. We've got three mm -hmm. more left this year. Uh, we have Nashville this weekend, um, one in Omaha, and then yeah. we've got one in Phoenix at the first weekend of November. Um, and all of these walks raise money for the one in 100, supporting the adult congenital hearts work, uh, adult congenital heart associations work, um, raising funds for CHD specific research, advocacy, educational resources. Uh, we are unique as a nonprofit because we also are kind of a hybrid patient medical professional organization. So we have an, uh, a medical advisory board that oversees an, uh, our accreditation program that basically raises the standard of care for heart patients across the country. And right. so these walks that we do all across the country um, are supporting those efforts. And there is still time, even if you didn't couldn't make it to the walk uh, this past weekend, you can still uh, donate at that really awesome scrolling link. I don't think I've ever seen my name scroll. Well, you know, you're screen. famous. I had to scroll. <laughs> you know, and, and I have some photos we're going to talk about. The ones you said, uh, some good photos I think people should see because they're so beautiful and touching. And, and if a couple people cry, it's okay because I get choked up looking at them because mm -hmm. You were a baby. Oh my, I just don't, I, I just want to, let me tell you this right now. There at the walk, there were doctors walking too. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Because most people think when you go to the hospital, you deal with the doctors, you deal with the nurses, they don't, you don't you think once you leave the hospital, that's it. They go their way, you go your way, and you don't see them on, in times where it's just where you're doing something outside whether it be at a walk, a, a fundraiser, a barbecue, whatever it may be. And you, and it's just good to see the, the healthcare professionals out there taking part in this, this walk. And I, I thought it was amazing. I met a wonderful doctor there. I can't remember his name. Uh, we, as a matter of fact, we were walking with him. A very nice doctor. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he, we were talking about 
<laughs> one of the doctors. I think Kathy was saying this story about one of the doctors. He thinks he's a comedian and he always tells <laughs> jokes. Dr. Abelhosen at, at UCLA. Right. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he didn't make it, but she, but she was, he was saying, Oh, as a matter of fact, you were, you and I were talking about this where he's like, yeah, you know, once I finish with this patient, I want to hurry up and get on over there. And he's like, no, 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 just take your time. You might not want to leave that patient right now. The walk is fine. And I love to see doctors bring humor and bring a smile to patients' face. Oh, it's just, it's, it's so therapeutic. It's so uplifting. And it's, it's just, it just makes you realize there are great people in the world that can heal you and make you smile as well and not just heal you physically. And that Absolutely. is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. I think it's beautiful. I uh, I was going through, I had to put the scroll up because I wanted to let people know that about you and how much of a superwoman you are and others out there battling the the this 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 illness and and even including Kathy because Kathy's my, my sweetheart, my good friend. She's like a sister to me. We go way back, we, we go way back like broke lawn chairs. We fold back. Way back <laughs> now, this first photo I want I want everyone to see. I think is amazing because it's you. It's you as a baby, but it's touching. Let me see, put it up real quick. That is you as a little <laughs> baby. Your first was that your first surgery? That was my first open heart surgery. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was about eleven month, months old. Um, and that was, uh, that surgery was actually at St. Vincent's hospital in Los Angeles. And, uh, man, speaking about how incredible these doctors are and, and really the whole reason that, that I'm here and, and so many of us, we have a growing population. There's more adults now than there are children is because of those innovative surgeries they were doing way back then. They didn't even put me on bypass for that surgery, which is what, what you know, they have to do usually to do open heart surgery, but they, you know, they opened me up and fixed, you know, what they were doing, did the repair in, in like less than two minutes or something. They didn't even put me on bypass. I mean, I, so many, the, the whole reason for my organization is because decades ago, doctors were pushing the limits and they were doing things that were incredible um, to get us to live to our first birthday, to our 18th birthday and, right. and on, right. you know, and, um, you know, they've totally flipped uh, the statistic, it used to be that maybe only 10 to 20 percent of kids with uh, heart problems would live to 18. And it's totally reversed now. We've got 80 to 90 percent of kids living living to 18 and beyond, you know, and that it's beautiful. Great. Ne neonatal surgeons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's you got to be a beast to be a deal. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll say this, Emily, I'll say this before comedy which I've been doing forever. But before comedy, I, I was a biology major and I was, I was, I wanted to be a doctor. Really? I was going to be a nephrologist. Oh, that's incredible. I didn't know yes, that. Yes. Yes. So that's a little tidbit that I throw out because people don't know that about me, but now you do. And the people who watch will know. Now this one is a beautiful one that's touching, but this is really touching to me because your mother is with you and this is beautiful. Yeah. But I, I think they're really the, you know, the true unsung heroes in um, most of most of the heart patients uh, storyline are, are yes. our parents. You know, they're yes. the ones who from day one are our biggest advocate. And it's 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 it's, it's scary for them. You know, I always used to joke growing up like I just get to go to sleep and have a nice nap and I wake up and see what what the happy ending was. You know, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I I I was not a part of those long hours in waiting rooms, not knowing the outcome. Um, our, our, our parents are really the, the stars and superheroes. And honestly, they continue to be our whole life. Even right. when we start taking ownership of our, our care, uh, once we become adults, my last surgery, when I was 35, I stayed at my mom's house. <laughs> As you, you should. You nobody got the, you start, yeah, the best nurse is mom. Asking right? for everything. Mom, I need this. I need that. Uh, <laughs> can I have some ice cream? Can mm -hmm. I uh, you you just you know you you're pushing it, but she loves you and all mothers love their children. So of course you're always welcome at home. And I met your wonderful mother. She's beautiful. She's sweet. I met your father as well, but I met your mother first and we talked in depth about not just heart surgery about about you about the foundation, about about everyone that was there, people she knew and people I knew, which was Kathy and a couple other people. But 
we had a blast. She's funny. And here's a picture of you and your a more recent picture of you and your mother, actually. Yeah, so that's um, me and my mom at my first heart walk um, in 2018. But that was the first um, one? That was the first one that I went to. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that I, you know, I'm, I wish I had known about this large community of heart patients that are out there, but it still blows my mind that living in a suburb of, of Los Angeles, I didn't know any other heart patients until I was over 30. But um, yeah, it wasn't until I went through my last surgeries as an adult that I found the Adult Congenital Heart Association, that I learned about the Walk for 100, and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. There's so many people out there who have gone through very similar experiences as right. I have, um, and I'm not alone. You know, we, we often, you know, I think most people who have chronic illnesses kind of live they're the only person like themselves in their life that they Correct. know going Correct. through what they're going through. And so we, we, we stay in our heads and we feel really alone. Um, but it, but thanks, I guess a lot in part to the internet and we're able to connect so much more easily now. And um, it's, it's really therapeutic and affirming to come together as a community um, and, and to validate each other's experiences and support each other as we go through the, the roller coaster ride of a lifelong chronic illness. Right, right. And we and we as human beings, we sometimes, like you said, you think it's just you. You think it's just mm -hmm. you and the journey by yourself. And there's other people out there. Now, as a baby, did you were you were you were you ever afraid or you just went through the you just really didn't have a, have have fear? Like some people have fear when they're babies and they go, well, I don't know what's going to happen if I'm going to wake up or, you know, if I'm if it's going to get better. There's certain things that run through your mind. I mean, as a child, I would imagine there would be some kind of fear. But you said you would wake up and be like, "Oh, let's, let's see the outcome." But what kind of what kind of baby were you? Were you the kind that was like a worrisome baby, or were you the kind of baby that was like, "I'm gonna go through it and I'm just gonna smile and, and wake up and see what happens." I think I was pretty fortunate. I was always very positive. I always just kind of assumed that the best thing was gonna happen. I, I think once I became a teenager, I was more aware of of the risk involved and that something bad could happen. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I don't. I didn't. I didn't. It didn't cause too much anxiety. I didn't like worry yeah. about it. I think yeah. maybe subconsciously um, I did, and probably I think I worry about it more as an adult now. Yeah. I think kids right. are a lot more carefree and oh, resilient. You yeah, know? that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, as adults, we always we are we're always aware of our mortality. When you're yeah. a kid, you'd be like, I'm gonna jump off a building head first and I'll be okay, you know, and, and don't think about it and get up and you will hurt, you will fall down. And, but as an adult, I, I used to do this joke about how as an adult, when you fall down, you you lay there for a minute. <laughs> you don't get up, you just kind of look around, see who watching you, see if everything is hurt or anything broken, then you go, Okay, I can get up now. You don't you don't just jump right back up, but a kid, you just jump right back up. Right. And and that's the same mentality. I I, I really that's what I love about kids. And I, I, the picture of you, the pictures of you in the hospital are so touching to me because there are so many babies out there like that. And we aren't aware of it. You know, mm -hmm. we aren't aware that there are others out there just like you with the same illnesses because you, you almost like you in your own world. It's like, it just happened to me. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, I'm not sure why it happened to me, but I'm gonna live with it. I'm gonna fight through it. I'm gonna be positive and I'm gonna keep going. And then you find out, oh, there's a whole community. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And that's why I love being a part of the Walk walk for One in 100 and when I met you. And, and, and I'm happy Kathy brought me out because Kathy said, hey, Dean, you know how Kathy talks. Hey, Dean, I want you to, I want you to donate. It's from my heart. <laughs> I said, for your heart. I said, OK, all right, I got you. OK, this is the link. So I, I donated. Then, then she hit me up. Thanks for donating. You going to walk? I said, walk where? <laughs> she said, you walk for what? And what hurts you? I said, I got to walk 100 miles. She said, no, no, stupid. You gotta walk. Just, it's just a mile. I said, OK, all right. And then I forgot. I ain't going to lie. I forgot. Then the day before, <laughs> yeah. she's like, the night before. She's like, hey, mm. you, are you coming to walk tomorrow? I said, I got to walk tomorrow, Saturday. And then I didn't know it was going to rain. I didn't even, I didn't even <laughs> look at the weather. And I thought, no, nah, I'm not going. Then I said, what? I'm going. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there for Kathy. And, and I'm happy I did because I actually, you know, met some wonderful people like yourself and, and other people there. And it, it, it's, it just felt good to be a part of something that's positive and that can help others. And I've always been that way. I've always been 
a caring, giving person and trying to do right and trying to do for others. So, and Kathy is one of my best friends in the business because we started doing comedy together, open mic back in San Francisco, open way back in the day, riding the car from gig to gig. And it was just, we just, we're, we're brother and sister. So I had to be there. So it was wonderful. And speaking of that, I'm going to show a picture of you. And this one is, and people don't, okay. So as a baby, you were in the hospital. And like you said, it's continuous. You have to, you have to stay on top of it. You have to stay mm -hmm. on top of it. So this is a picture of you as you became an adult and you're in there with a smile on your face, which, you know, it's looking at the baby, <laughs> looking at the baby with the little pacifier in the top. That's so cute because, you know, the pacifier is above your head. And then I get, then we get to see you as an adult, which is amazing. This is a good picture. I like this picture. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, the the funny thing with that that was a 2017 surgery I had uh, for when I became bionic and um and when I came out uh, we didn't know if they were gonna replace one or two valve valves um, and so when I came out I was still intubated they were wheeling me out of the OR and you know I was super mm -hmm. like drugged up and groggy. And I just kept holding up like one or two, one or two, like, like, tell me, tell me, I want you to tell me, did you do two? And they told me, uh, yeah, we did two. We replaced both of them. And I was like, yeah. And I was like giving high fives. And, and they're, they, they told me later, they're like, we've never seen someone so happy come out of the OR. You were like, I, high I five everybody. Uh, Other so patients happy. were like, what is she doing? <laughs> She's happy to be in the hospital. <laughs> that is amazing. And I got to meet the love of your life, your husband. Very nice guy. He's he reminds me of a comedian friend of mine. I actually saw him the other day at the comedy store. His name is Kirk Fox. Oh yeah. You, you ever see him? He's a very funny guy. And no, uh, I have to look him oh, up. He's funny. He reminds me of tall, slim, and just really, really good human being. So the guy is hilarious. So this is you, you and your husband, I, the 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 non Kirk Fox or the Kirk Fox look alike, Kirk, Kirk <laughs> Fox twin. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Ryan and I have uh, been together for about twenty years now because we met in college and okay, uh, me, we've been me, married for ten. Let me stop you. Let me stop you. Say that again. How many years? <laughs> we've been together for twenty years. Oh, come on now, people without any kind of heart defects can't last a year. <laughs> we've been here for 20 years most people be like man I, i've got a great heart and i can't stand i've been gone one year no but 20 that's beautiful that's amazing yeah mm -hmm. i just had yeah. to throw that because because it is i wanted to you say 20 again but go ahead thank you thank you yeah we've been married for um for 10 and um it wasn't it was really uh right after we got married when he first went through my first big surgery with me and i was i was really scared and nervous you know like you know, I have my whole family who's gone through everything from the beginning with me. And I was really worried, like I was more worried about him and how hard it was going to be on him when I went through um, that first surgery that we went through together. And he was a rock star. Like he was cracking jokes with all the nurses. That I mean, so like cool. what you said about humor really being um, an incredible medicine. Um, really I, I knew when he was like making light of everything and, and, and in, a, in a good way, you know, that made um, mm -hmm. joking about all the different kind of medical things and the things right. you have to deal with in the hospital. And um, I just knew, okay, he's going to be okay. He, and uh, yeah. he's he's just been part of my the rock upon which I you know I have as my support system throughout my health journeys and I'm just yeah. so grateful. Now was this before you got married or was this when you when he was doing all this or it was right after so okay. <laughs> <laughs> luckily he was kind of roped in but right. he's like I can't go nowhere. No. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love it. I love it because. We need support, that kind of support, mm -hmm. you know, where someone can be there for you by your, your bedside and through those trials and tribulations that mm -hmm. can make you laugh and that can keep you smiling in times that are, are, are really dire and detri detrimental to your health and to your life. And you, you don't know the outcome. You really don't know the outcome, but you believe and you stay positive and you keep going. And with that other person being positive, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I love to see, I love to see people like that in relationships whether they're at the hospital or anywhere, but especially at the hospital, uh, it, it's, I think it's, I think it's magical. I think it's magical. So you guys have a really great relationship and, and you, like you said, you, you travel. And I love the fact that you sent me a picture of you out there getting it in. And I was like, oh, she out there. <laughs> People have to see this. <laughs> 
I mean, that yeah. is amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a Giants Causeway in, in Ireland. Um, and uh, uh, my husband and I actually lived abroad. Uh, he, he was abroad for about seven years. I was, I was living abroad for about three with him. Um, but we traveled all over Europe. And um, I mean, really, again, just kind of living as, as big of a life as we could, seeing the world and experiencing things. Um, we were both very adventuresome people. And I think for me, a lot of it does stem from my early childhood experiences being in the hospital a lot and just wanting to make the most of, of every day and every opportunity and just figure out a way to, to do it, you know, right, uh, right. see the world and make it happen. What were some of the other foundations that were there that night, that that particular day on, on the walk? There was one that was Corazon. Yeah, and, Camp and, del Corazon. Oh, I love uh, it. Corazon. I love, yes. I love it. Corazon. Because you know, and I tell people all the time, if you say, see, you could tell you 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 actually call the right place because they go, Tu eres mi corazón. They mean, I love you, you my heart, right? But yeah. if they call and you say, Hey, uh, you got the calzones? That's different. That's calzones, <laughs> is not calzones. So you got the wrong place if you call and they say calzone. Because yeah. that's food. <laughs> right. it really ain't, it's not good for your heart to eat too much of that. But it's good stuff. But that, <laughs> but I, I, I like that you have those other other organizations that are involved and they were there. And that yeah. one stuck out to me because I think you said it was Catalina. Is that where? Yeah. Yeah. So Camp Del Corazon is um, a heart camp for kids. Um, and it's held every summer on Catalina Island, um, and it's been around for over 25 years. Uh, it was founded by a cardiac nurse and a cardiac doc pediatric cardiac doctor, and they started this camp experience just for heart kids um, so that they could get the experience of being just being a kid, just living like a normal kid, you know, um, because of our restrictions that we often have. Um, in childhood, we kind of have to sit on the sidelines a lot. And um, this nurse and doctor came together to create this camp um, to enable all these heart kids to experience the camp life, the That's going amazing. on the high ropes course, kayaking, um, you know, snorkeling, camp, being around the campfire together, doing skit nights. And um, I've gotten involved just recently in the last few years as a counselor there. I was unfortunately never went there as a camper myself, but I, I now volunteer there as a, as a uh, counselor. And boy, Dean, it is a magical experience to watch these kids in like four or five days just gain this new sense of confidence right. and, and to create friends with people who have gone through what they've gone through and just feel empowered to like, you know, live and and not be defined as a heart patient. You know, that's amazing. And 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 being a part of it, being a volunteer, that's a wonderful thing. Because you were mentioning that they're always looking for good volunteers to go out there as well. So I want to throw that out there. And now is it a, is it like a week long, or is it how long is it usually? So they have uh, three different sessions that are each um, four to five days, and it's always towards the end of August, right before the kids go back to school. Um, and yeah, campdelcorazon.org, you can go on and find out information um, and how to volunteer. Um, usually the volunteer process starts earlier in the year, January or February. So if you're thinking about it, go on soon and you can you can check out their website and start um, the orientation process. But I highly recommend it. And it's a great excuse to have like an all expense paid vacation to Catalina, it's Catalina Island. Right, right. right. <laughs> And it's the best time of the year, everyone. It's the best time. End of August, which is hot in SoCal, and you get to hang out in Catalina. Well, mm -hmm. can you, you can't mm -hmm. beat that. You're helping With a bunch of kids and just be a big kid yourself, like you're saying. I mean, they're, they're, you, you just get to be a kid with the kids, and it's so right. much fun. Right. Now, what I do during my podcast is something called RQT time. RQT, which is random question time, has mm -hmm. nothing to do with what we're talking about. It's just a random question. Yeah. And and you answer it and you say why, okay? Okay. All right. Bell bottoms or jorts? You know, jorts or jean shorts, jorts. Yeah. Bell bottoms or jorts and why? Okay, definitely jorts because bell. I'm I'm short. I'm only five one, <laughs> and if I wear something with bell bottoms, it just makes me. It, I look like uh, disproportionately incorrect. You know, like I. Right. It's just they. <laughs> They weigh me down and they get dirty. I don't like my pants to get dirty. And 
Yeah, right. definitely jorts. Because your bell bottoms, you, since you're short, your bell, bell bottoms will pull up like shorts and they won't, and that's not a look, good look for shorts. It's no. from the out no. at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try to look like I have long legs. <laughs> yes, yes. So jorts is a good one. Yeah. Maybe even maybe even skinny jorts. Maybe we even look taller yeah. with skinny jorts. Yeah, and, skinny jorts. <laughs> you know what? It's funny we're talking about this. I've never because you know the skinny, skinny jean, all that stuff came later after jorts. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine seeing someone with skinny jorts? That would to me that would be hilarious. But it, I don't think it would make them look taller. It just make them look funny. But <laughs> in their mind, they go, "Man, I think I'm gonna be at least six feet wearing these jorts." But they're only like five three. I'm gonna be six feet when I throw these jorts on, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now your family. Now I know is your family is just you. Do you have any siblings or just you? I have um, four siblings. Yeah, um, okay. I have, and I have like ten nieces and nephews. I've got a great big family. You know, every holiday we're having three di or four different Christmases and Thanksgiving. Nice. So I'm I'm really blessed to have a, a huge family and support system. Nice, nice. That's yeah. it's, that's beautiful, and, and it's a wonderful thing to have a great support system when you're going through what you going through anything, especially what you're going through, went through, or going through in your life, because it's so major. It's not like it's not like somebody getting their appendix taken out. It's, it's deep. It's really even as an adult, I can only I can only imagine how the surgery would be, because as a neonatal surgeon, it, believe me, that's a beast. Because you got to be in there working with babies. Mm -hmm. But even for adults, it's not easy to to do what they're doing. To take mm -hmm. care of you, believe me, I'm sure of that. It's not like they go, oh yeah, we'll just just snap this here and put this here, and you can go. They have to really know what they're doing. So yeah. it's good to have a good doctor. And I will say this: I believe Kathy's had some really great doctors because she's been going for years, ever since I've known her. And and I I didn't know the magnitude of it when we were back home and back in Northern Cali, coming up as young adults. I didn't know the magnitude, but as we've gotten older, I realized it's not. It's, it's pretty intense, mm -hmm. pretty intense. Pretty and it intense. takes a village. Like you saw at the walk, it's uh, it's the doctors and the medical professionals all coming together with the family. It's, you know, everyone's invested. Everyone's all in. And and right. the only way you get through it is if, if we do it together as a community. Right. Now, the picture that I didn't show <clears throat> that I love is of you with food. <laughs> 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 I am a little food obsessed. With, with, with food. Now tell us more about your culinary because that plate, that plate looks good. <laughs> that plate looks good. It looks healthy. No, it's, it's not healthy. It's not, I, thought, I thought it was like, I thought it was, was it pastries or was it food? Yeah, I think they were all little like uh, bite size, uh, you know, like desserts, little small You know what desserts. I thought it was? I thought there was some healthy potatoes. No, no, they potatoes. were all sweets. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, does your husband, he loves the sweets? Well, you know, that's a funny thing. When I first met him, he did not have a sweet tooth at all. <laughs> oh, he did not like sweets, but I successfully you converted him. You messed him up. <laughs> yeah, and so now, I, you know, he's like every night, like, oh, let's have a little scoop of ice cream. And, you know, he, he loves, you know, good sweets, not, good not the you know, right. heavily I, processed, but homemade sweets. I'll give you a good sweets, sweet item that I found out recently at Trader Joe's. Mm. There's, a, you know, you know, the, the creamsicles, the, the orange creamsicles we had as kids, mm -hmm. they have a mango one. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's I'm fresh. Gonna... It's so fresh. It's so good. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful treat. It's refreshing. Yeah. But it's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of a lot of the desserts that Trader Joe's has. Their okay, ice so. cream, their cookies, especially around the holidays, their all their Christmas cookies. Oh, I love them. So good. And they, they also have a cinnamon sugar bun twist. Oh. And it's it's a it's a loaf of bread. It's to die for. I, it's, it might still be there now, but you run over there, you can get it, and what you do is you cut it real thin and put it in a toaster and put a little bit of butter. Mm. It's the best thing ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a lot. They do have a lot of good things, but I'm glad you converted them. Yeah, because it's important to convert the people to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you brought them into the drug house. Yeah, we got pastries in here. Come on in. And he's like, OK, <laughs> try this right here. OK, try this. Next thing you know, you, you step back. He's like, uh, can I get some pastries? I thought you didn't like pastries, but you brought me in. Brought me in. I'm, here. I'm here to stay. I'm here to stay. That's some, right. people, some people are salt people, salt people. 
and some people were sweet people. Mm-hmm. Some people like salt chips and stuff like that, and some people like sweets. Mm-hmm. But my family is all about have always always been about sweets. My father, mm-hmm. everyone is all about having keeping. I don't even keep ice cream in the refrigerator. I do have the mango because it was given to me as a gift. I have the mango bars right now, but I don't keep ice cream in my freezer. But my family all year round, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. I, they, my father's an ice cream. He like he loves what's it called? Uh, banana nut ice cream, right? Ooh, it's very good. Yeah, but, but we couldn't eat his kids because he was like, y'all can't eat just because it ain't good for you. But he only did that because he didn't want to share. Y'all can't <laughs> eat it ain't good for you. Don't eat that ice cream. Go to bed. Don't eat the ice cream. And we'd be like, why is he keeping it? It must. Why is it not good for us? But he's loving it, right? <laughs> but as an adult, we tried it and we realized, oh, he didn't want to share. This is some mm. good stuff. So my father, when we were kids, the Exorcist, when the first came out, my father was like, nothing keeps me away from my ice cream. I can eat ice cream through anything. I got a stomach of steel. And then the, when the Exorcist came on and the girl spun her head around and spit out the soup, he said, oh, my, I got to put this ice cream away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought you had a stomach of steel. I can't eat that nasty that stuff shot out that little girl's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I uh, I I know one thing. I've been that I work out every day, and I and I I, I try to keep a pretty clean diet and eat mm-hmm. right. I cook a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't eat a lot. I don't eat fast food hardly ever. Mm-hmm. So I'm always on top of my game. But and people say they work out for certain reasons. Some people actually work out so they can't eat what they want to eat. You know mm-hmm. that's how it is. You know, I go to the gym so I can have a piece of cake. You're like, really? Yeah. But that's the only reason you go. Yeah, I go because I have a piece of cake. I love the good stuff, but I also love to work out. And I will say this, that with with congenital heart failure, I was happy to see people moving because even with little exercise you do put in is good for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Movement is powerful. Absolutely. Movement is important. There was a, a old lady sitting next to me on a plane and she said this and I'll never forget this. She said motion is lotion. And I was yeah. like, wow, that is so sweet. She was about almost 90, 90 something years old. And she said to me, do you remember? She said, I move like this because motion is lotion. In other words, keep moving. Don't stop. Yeah. So, so it's very important. So we, when we were walking and I was looking at the people and everyone walking, I'm like, this is beautiful. And it was raining. So most people don't want to come out in SoCal when it rains. We know that. So it's a, it was beautiful to see people out, like you said. Mm-hmm. And if you need to stop, and take a breath, a breather, you just do it. Mm -hmm. But you just keep, and then you just pick it right back up. Don't push yourself. You ain't got to force it. Just enjoy it. Exactly. Remember you you said, when you stop, pick up a stick. Yeah. (laughs) Act like you're doing something. Hmm. Yes. Nice stick. (laughs) That was my trick growing up was always like, oh, I'm just stopping to smell these flowers. I'm just stopping to check out the bark on this tree because, you know, really I'm trying to catch my breath. But that's the thing. You just do it at your own pace. That's the thing. It's like exercise is so important. Even if you have a a heart heart condition, you know, you got to it's still a muscle. You got to work it. You got to keep it in shape, you know. And so as long as you keep doing that within within your means, you know, within your ability and capacity. And sometimes that means going slow or, or mm-hmm. picking up a stick and looking at stuff. Uh, you just, you got to keep doing it because yeah, motion of, is lotion. I love it. Yeah. Motion is lotion. A friend of mine, his friend has a problem with his heart, but it's the flap or something. Mm. And it's, the blood is going, I don't know what it's called, but it's going in the opposite direction. It's, going, okay. it's, it's coming back in. So I'm, you know, my, 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 my prayers to him and his family because it's not that's scary and he has to get it fixed. So mm-hmm. I hope that he will tune in and some other people tune in and will see that it's necessary to take care, take action and do these mm-hmm. things and don't be afraid and don't be afraid to go and get it done. We know mm-hmm. it may not be cheap. We, there's always ways to get it done. Mm-hmm. But at some point in time, you have to do it because it's you only have one heart. Mm-hmm. You don't have mm-hmm. two like you have two lungs, or two, two <laughs> arms. You have one heart. Yeah. And, and it's very important. So I, I know one thing that I'm going to support you 100% through and Kathy and everyone in this fight and this struggle. And when I want to, I don't want to say fight because like it's a bad thing. I'll say uh, uh, support you in this journey because it's a journey. Mm-hmm. The, the fight, mm-hmm. it's not a fight to live. It's a fight when you don't live. 
Mm-hmm. But you have to remember mm-hmm. that they always have to enjoy the journey, whatever the journey it is. So I'm I'm down like four flat tires. You know? <laughs> right. So I'm gonna I'm going to be a part of it next year in some magnitude, whether walk or whatnot. The Catalina, the Calazone, no Calazone. <laughs> Corazon. It's not the food, Dean, it's the heart. <laughs> You're part of it. And I can't wait to see you. And I know Kathy can't wait to see you and your husband at the shows, at the comedy shows. Yeah, we're going to come out and see you yeah. guys next month. Yeah. Come when out you come to out, your please the bring chateau. To throw at me whenever you want to, you know. Mm-hmm. Bring tomatoes, soft tomatoes. No, not hard. <laughs> uh, no, we'll get really ripe, juicy ones. <laughs> right. They're easy. They just kind of like, they just kind of like tease you. When they're hard, they hurt like bullets. We don't need that. <laughs> so for sure, please uh, tell your husband hello for me and enjoy your holiday season. Thank you so much for coming on. It's such a pleasure. And I, I wish you all the best, much success, much love to you and keep doing what you're doing, Emily. Thank you so much, Dean. This was an absolute joy and pleasure to be on your show. Thank you thank, so much. Thank you so much. And in the the yoga, they say namaste, right? Namaste. <laughs> So, you know, I don't do a lot of yoga, but I love the word namaste. So we'll just say it like that and enjoy your holiday season, Emily. Thanks, Dean. You too. See you around. Bye-bye.